Hello students, so in this video we are going to complete Environment Current Affairs Revision from July to December 2022. Let's start. The first topic is IPBES Assessment Report Sustainable Use of Wild Species. So IPBES full form is Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services. IPBS is an independent intergovernmental body that strengthens science policy interface for conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity. IPBS report provides insights, analysis and tools to establish more sustainable use of wild species of plants, animals, fungi and algae around the world. It identifies five broad categories of practices in the use of wild species they are fishing gathering logging terrestrial animal harvesting and observing the next topic is project tiger it is launched in 1973 by the ministry of environment forest and climate change so it is launched to restore the tiger pop tiger population and strengthen conservation of the tigers so under the project tiger the first interstate tiger location project took place in 2018 to increase the tiger population in odisha state but due to the lack of tiger reserve management due to lack of monitoring protection and due to competition from the existing female tigress from the core area the first relocation project was failed so recently uh, Guru Ghazi Das National Park in Chhattisgarh and Thamor Pingla Wildlife Sanctuary in Chhattisgarh were approved as the, uh, the 53rd Tiger Reserve. So let's know more about the tigers. It is Indian Tiger or Royal Bengal Tiger. It is a national animal of India. They are put in the conserved status of IUCN's endangered list and Schedule 1 of Wildlife Conservation Act 1972 and Appendix 1 on sites. So India is a home to more than 70% of the global tiger population and maximum number of tigers are found in Madhya Pradesh followed by Karnataka and Uttarakhand. And the tiger stripes are individually a unique one as same as the human fingerprints. The next topic is impact of climate change on children. So UNICEF, International Organization for Migration, Georgetown University and United Nations University have launched guiding principles for children on the move in the context of climate change. They are the right of the children should be guaranteed, the interests of the children should be given priority, they have the right to be cared by their parents or caregivers and are not to be separated from them. They, have, they should have access to education, healthcare and social services. The migrant children should be guaranteed a nationality, etc. So, the children are exposed to vulnerability due to the climate change, floods, heat waves, exposure to different types of pollution and extreme weather events, children are exposed to physical, psychological and emotional vulnerability. The next topic is offshore wind energy. So wind power is one of the fastest growing renewable energy technology. So onshore wind energy means the power generated by the wind turbines located on land driven by natural movement of air. So offshore wind energy is the energy generated from farms that are located over the oceans. So recently Ministry of New and Renewable Energy released strategy paper for establishment of offshore wind energy projects. So it has identified 16 zones for harnessing offshore wind energy. So according to the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy India, um, can generate 127 gigawatts of offshore wind energy with its 7600 kilometers of coastline the next topic is 
ग्राउंड वाटर कंटेमिनेशन सो वर्ल्ड बैंक हैज रिलीज अ रिपोर्ट ऑन ग्राउंड वाटर कंटेमिनेशन विथ अ टाइटल सीइंग द इनविजिबल अ स्ट्रैटेजिक रिपोर्ट ऑन ग्राउंड वाटर क्वालिटी सो एज पर द रिपोर्ट 150 मिलियन पीपल आर एक्सपोज टू डेंजरस लेवल्स ऑफ हेल्थ इंपैक्ट सिंस 1970 and long term exposure to fluorine in drinking water may put 200 million people to skeletal fluorosis and the states of west bengal jharkhand bihar uttar pradesh assam manipur chatisgarh are mostly affected by arsenic contamination of the ground water and in andhra pradesh tamil nadu uttar pradesh gujarat and rajasthan fluoride contamination is widely prevalent and 16 states have reported with a high contamination high uranium contamination groundwater so some common diseases caused due to groundwater are due to arsenic contamination in groundwater black food disease painful and disfiguring skin conditions kidney disease heart and lung diseases and multiple cancers develop and due to fluoride contamination in ground water skeletal fluorosis dental fluorosis etc occur due to manganese contamination impairment of intellectual developments occur and due to uranium contamination in ground water kidney diseases and bone cancer may occur and due to nitrate contamination baby blue syndrome is caused so some initiatives taken by Uh, india to ensure quality of ground water are the central ground water board is set up to monitor ground water quality and next is atal bhujal yojana was set up for sustainable ground water management and bureau of indian standards has prescribed units for contaminants in drinking water and control of industrial pollution was made a provision under water act of 1974 and common effluent treatment plants were established for small scale industrial units the next topic is aridity anomaly outlook index so this index is issued by the indian meteorological department as per the report at least 85% of districts are facing arid conditions across india so as per the report 63 districts out of 756 districts are non arid while 660 districts are facing aridity so 196 districts are facing severe degree of dryness and out of this 65 are in up so bihar and for the first highest num- number of districts with aridity is uttar pradesh with 65 degree 60 65 districts and bihar is the second highest number of districts with 30 with 33 districts experiencing arid conditions so the causes of drought con- situations in india are the increased intensity and frequency of heat waves and limited irrigation coverage inadequate water availability for irrigation uneven distribution of rainfall and considerable considerable variations in rainfall due to el nino etc so some initiatives taken by india to manage drought is national agricultural drought assessment and monitoring system next uh, drought early warning system atmanirbhar krishi app and next is water policy act of po- policy of 2012 relief measures were taken and draft mi- mitigation programs like atal bhujal yojana jal shakti abhiyan pradhan mantri krishi sinchai yojana integrated watershed management program etc were initiated the next topic is access to clean and healthy environment as universal human right so united nation general assembly has passed a resolution that recognizes right to clean healthy and sustainable environment as a human right so india has also voted in favor of this right so some constitutional provisions related to environment and human rights in indian constitution are article 21 so it guarantees fundamental right to life and right to an environment which is free of danger of diseases and infection are also included in this right next is article 48a this article talks about protection and improvement of environment to safeguard forests and wildlife of the country and next is article 51a clause g 
so it tells that it is the duty of every citizen to protect and improve the natural environment the next topic is un ocean conference so the first un ocean conference was held at un headquarters in new york so over 150 countries collectively agreed to scale up science based innovative actions to address the si uh, ocean emergency supporting the implementation of sustainable development goal number 14 that is life below water and the second un ocean conference was held at lisbon and ended with the lisbon declaration with the title our ocean our future call for action so under this de uh, declaration it states that uh, it, so the declaration has made voluntary com voluntary commitment to conserve and protect at least 30% of the global ocean within marine protected area and other area based conservation measures by 2030 the next one is ozone hole over the tropics so if the area of ozone loss is larger than 25% of area when compared to the undisturbed atmosphere then it is called all season ozone hide sorry all season ozone hole so uh, scientists have revealed all season ozone hole in the lower stratosphere in tropical area which is greater than the antarctic ozone hole so some initiatives to protect ozone layer are vienna convention on protection of ozone layer in 1985 in 18, 1987 montreal protocol was adopted to protect the ozone layer and in 2016 kigali agreement was adopted to achieve 80% reduction in hydrofluorocarbons by 2047 The next topic is five wetlands get international important tag. They are Kirikili Bird Sanctuary in Tamil Nadu. It is a home for uh, cormorants, egrets, uh, grey heron, open bill stock, dart, spoon bill, white ib ibis, night herons, grapes, grey pelicans, etc. Next is Palli Karanai Marsh Reserve Forest. So in, it is also in Tamil Nadu. It is one of the last remaining natural wetlands of Chennai. Next is Pichavaram Mangrove in Tamil Nadu. It is one of the largest mangrove ecosystems located between the estuaries of Vellore and Kollidam rivers. So there are trees that are permanently rooted under the the mangrove uh, trees here are permanently rooted under few feet of water. The next is Pala Wetland. It is the largest wetland in Mizoram. So, um, it is a sixteen kilometer deep lake and supports rich diversity of animal species. So, sambar deer, barking deer, wild boars, who who look gibbon, fire is leaf monkey are found here. The next one is Sakya Sagar Wetland in Madhya Pradesh, created from Maniar River. in 1918 it is located near the madhav national park in shivpuri district the next topic is radio carbon dating or carbon 14 dating so every living organism observes absorb carbon including radioactive carbon 14 so when they die they stop observing carbon and the radioactive carbon 14 starts decaying based on this decay they determine how long something was dead so but due to the burning of fossil fuels in ra uh, the radioactive carbon 14 levels in the atmosphere is decreasing and this is adversely affecting the radio carbon dating the next topic is right to repair so right to repair movement calls for manufacturers to make authentic parts available to the consumers so that they can get their device repaired from independent shops or the any other third party so recently department of consumer affairs set up a community on the right to repair to emphasize on lifestyle on for the environment movement that is life movement to sustainable usage of farming equipment mobile phones automobiles and automobile equipment so it is already recognized in the us uk and european union the next topic is green energy open access rules 
So, Ministry of Power has notified the Green Energy Open Access Rules. The main objective of these rules is to accelerate renewable energy program. So, all the industries, consumers and small-scale industries are called to demand green energy and they will be provided green certificates if they consume green energy. The next topic is Great Indian Bustard. So, Great Indian Bustards are found in arid and semi-arid grasslands. Rajasthan has the highest population. Desert National Park Sanctuary in, uh, in Rajasthan, Nalia of Gujarat, Varora of Maharashtra and Bellari of Karnataka are the important sites of Great Indian Bustards. So, many Great Indian Bustards are dying by shrinking, uh, striking to the high power lines web so supreme court also ordered that rajasthan and gujarat states to make high tension power lines underground but any action is not taken till now the next topic is monarch butterflies so it is the most recognizable butterflies in the world in North America, millions of monarch butterflies undertake longest migration due to the loss of habitat, increased use of herbicides and pesticides and climate change. These species are decreased. IUCN has added this butterfly to red list of threatened species and categorized it as endangered. The next topic is snow leopard. Snow leopards are kept in Schedule 1 of Indian Wildlife Act of 1972 and vulnerable status of IUCN Red List. So there are mainly found, these snow leopards are mainly found in the mountains of Central Asia covering Ladakh, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand and Sikkim. According to the study of the Geological Survey of India, snow leopards regulate the population of herbivorous species like Siberian ibex and blue sheep and the absence of snow leopards causes depletion in the vegetation cover. The next topic is light mantled albatross. So Phobiatria fal falpidrate. So these are the seabirds found in the southern and cold Antarctic regions. So it is found for the first time near Rameshwaram coast. The next topic is Global Platform for Disaster Risk Reduction 2022. So the seventh session was organized by UN Office for Disaster Risk Reduction in Bali. The next topic is Coastline Erosion. So erosion, coastline erosion is the long-term removal of sediments and rocks along the coastline due to the natural process or due to human activities. Ministry of Earth Science recently informed that 34% of coastline is under varying degrees of er erosion. So West Bengal has suffered the most erosion followed by Kerala, Tamil Nadu and Gujarat. And according to the National Assessment of Shoreline Changes along Indian coast, human activities like mining, offshore dredging, etc. have triggered coastal erosion. Next topic is India's largest floating solar power pipe projects. So 100 megawatts floating solar power project is launched in NTPC Ramagundam in Telangana. The next topic is Asia Pacific Sustainability Index 2021. So it is released by Knight Frank which is a global property consultant. So as per the index, India is the sixth largest country in Asia Pacific to issue green bonds in 2021. Four Indian states are present in the top 20 sustainable cities. They are Bangalore, followed by Delhi, Hyderabad and Mumbai. Next topic is India's updated NDCs. NDCs means nationally determined contributions. So nationally determined contributions are the each country's efforts and goals to limit the climate change and global warming as per the Paris Agreement. They are to reduce first is to reduce the emission intensity by 45% by 2030 from 2005. The next one is to achieve electric power capacity from non-fuel based energy resources by 50% and to create additional carbon sink through addition of forest and recover. The next topic is 
energy conservation amendment bill 2022 so lok sabha was recently has recently passed this bill so the key provisions of this bill are first is uh, it has made the consumption of energy from non fossil fuels mandatory for commercial and industries and next is it introduced energy conservation and sustainable building codes next one is amendment is done in motor vehicles act 1988 to conserve energy sources thus it introduced carbon trading and this will increase private sector investments in clean energy ensure faster decarbonization the next topic is ethanol blending so ethanol is a biofuel it is blended with petroleum to reduce carbon emission prime minister recently said that the target of 10% ethanol blending with petrol has been accomplished before the target period itself and india has now kept a target of 20% of ethanol blending with the petroleum by 2025 the next topic is ocean thermal energy so it is a process of producing energy by harnessing temperature differences between ocean surface water and the deep ocean waters so the national institute of ocean technology established india's first ocean thermal energy conversion plant so this plant will now uh, convert the low temperature thermal desalination based on based desalination plant for the conversion of sea water into potable water next topic is coastal region conservation so coastal zone is the area between land and sea comprising of coastal land intertidal area coastal ecosystems mangroves coral reefs sea grass mud flats estuaries lagoons sand dunes etc so india has a coastline of 7516 kilometers and there are nine coastal states or uh, in our country so they are gujarat maharashtra goa karnataka kerala tamil nadu andhra pradesh odisha and west bengal so coastal regulation zones are four types they are the zone 1 comes to uh the zone one include ecologically sensitive areas and include mangroves national parks marine parks sanctuaries reserve forest wildlife habitat biosphere reserves etc zone two are the areas within existing municipal limits with roads and infrastructure zone three are the areas within municipal limits or other uh urban areas with no proper infrastructure and zone 4 is the areas from low tide line to 12 km nautical miles on the sea ward side and inland water influenced by the tides the next concept is earth ganga so earth ganga focuses on creating economic livelihood opportunities to sustain the activities under the namami gange project so Uh, several new initiatives were launched under the earth ganga they are jalaj jalaj involves setting up of small shops or floating mobile centers to promote livelihood on the banks of river ganga next is uh, under sahakar ganga gram program 75 villages in five states are promoted natural farming among the farmers cooperatives under the brand ganga next is tourism related portal uh, i am avatar was also launched to promote livelihood opportunities the next topic is new ramsar sites so 26 wetlands were added to ramsar sites and now we have 75 ramsar sites so covering 13 lakh 26677 hectares so those 26 sites are um here in this map you can see so yes so here first is shalbag wetland okay so shalbag wetland conservation reserve and 
Hyam Wetland Conservation Reserves in Jammu and Kashmir. Next is Pala Wetland in Mizoram, Tampara Lake Hirak, uh, Hirakod Reservoir, Ansupa Lake and Satkosia George are in Odisha. Next is 13 sites from Tamil Nadu are under the new Ramsar site list. They are uh, Suchindram, sorry, Suchindram Therur Wetland Complex, Vuduvur Bird Sanctuary, Kanjikarakulam Bird Sanctuary, Chitragudi Bird Sanctuary, Pichavaram Mangroves, Pillikarinai, Pallikarinai Marsh Reserve Forest, Kirikili Bird Sanctuary, Udayamarthandapuram Bird Sanctuary, Vedantangal Bird Sanctuary, Vellur Bird Sanctuary, Dembannur Wetland Complex, Gulf of Mannar, Marine Biodiversity Reserve, Kutankulam Bird Sanctuary. So all these are the 13 wetlands present in Tamil Nadu. Next is Rangatittu Bird Sanctuary in Karnataka, Nanda Lake in Goa, Tanegrik in Maharashtra and Yashwan Sagar, Sirpur Wetland, Sakya Sagar Wetland in Madhya Pradesh. So all these are the new Ramsar sites added in the Ramsar list. So coming to the next topic, Coalition for Disaster Resilience infrastructure so india has signed headquarter agreement with cdri that is coalition of disaster resilient infrastructure so the headquarters agreement is an agreement between international organization and host state to determine the privileges and immunities necessary for good functioning the next topic is hargar jal so hargar jal is a flagship program implemented by jal jeevan mission under the ministry of jal shakti so in uh, ministry of jal shakti with the partnership of the states and union territories to ensure tap water connection in every rural household by 2024 goa has become the first state and dadra and nagar haveli daman and diu has become the first union territory to get first har jal hargar jal certified state and union territory the next topic is Center notifies India's 31st Elephant Reserve. So, Agastya Malay Elephant Reserve in Tamil Nadu became 31st Elephant Reserve. Karnataka has highest number of elephants followed by Assam and Kerala. The next topic is India's Virtual Herbarium. So, Herbarium is the place where dried uh, specimens of the plants are stored. So, India's Indian Virtual Herbarium is the database of dried plants that mean maximizes the usefulness of the collection the next topic is indian um, national water awards so these awards are launched by ministry of jal shakti so it aims to sensitize the public about the importance of water and motivates them to adopt the best water usage practices the next topic is ozone layer. So the US National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration found that the concentration of overall ozone depleting substances in the mid-latitude stratosphere in 2022 are in the same amounts that was observed in 1980. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration NOAA ozone depleting gas index tracks the concentrations of ozone depleting um, chloride and bromine so these ozone depleting substances are long-lived man-made chemicals which destroys the ozone layer the montreal protocol works for the protection of this ozone layer the next topic is per and per fluoro fluoroalkyl substances so these are the chemicals that have strong carbon fluorine bonds and do not degrade easily in the environment and these are referred as forever chemicals their production and use are eliminated by many countries a new research suggests that rainwater around the world is contaminated by this pfas next topic is la nina conditions enter third year sixth time since 1950. So La Nina is a weather pattern observed when the sea surface temperature gets east uh, gets um, sea surface temperature in the eastern equatorial Pacific gets comparatively colder than the normal. So as per the Indian Meteorological Department data, La Nina conditions were present from September 2020 and it has now entered the third year and it is classified as the triple dip La Nina.
So generally, El Nina and La Nina occur every 4 to 5 years and El Nina is the most frequent than La Nina. So due to the presence of La Nina conditions, we get better monsoon rains in India. Intense hurricanes and cyclones are also caused in Atlantic and Bay of Bengal regions and also Peru and Equatorial region, Equator region and are affected with the droughts and heavy floods in Africa, high temperature in western pacific and indian ocean the next topic is arctic amplification so it if the temperature in the arctic region rapidly increases than rest of the polar regions then it is called arctic amplification so as per the report arctic is the is heating up four times as fast as rest of the world next topic is strong thermal emission velocity enhancement so these are auroras like aurora like phenomena that leads to purple streak of lights these appear significantly at the lower height in the atmosphere than the auroras so these were first appeared in 2017 in new zealand canada alaska and uk between october to february and are continuing next is zombie ice so it is the massive greenland ice sheet and is melting rapidly which may lead to the rise in the global sea level by at least 10 inches the next is tonga volcano so the volcano volcanic eruption in tonga is likely to add up global warming and depletion of earth's ozone layer as per the new study next topic is climate change and women so international center for integrated mountain development has released state of gender equity and climate change in south asia and hindu kush himalayas report so due to the climate change many of them went down to poverty and financial burdens and ends up in domestic violence human trafficking sexual violence child marriage and other forms of violence and due to the climate change approximately 80 percent of the people were displaced many women have lost their opportunities of health and education so women are directly affected by the climate change the next topic is extreme weather events so due to the rising global temperature severe extreme weather events are experienced around the world so recent droughts in europe and floods in pakistan are the some are some examples the next topic is air pollution policy so the center has set up a new target of 40% reduction in the particulate matter concentration in 123 cities covered under the National Clean Air Program by 2026. So air quality standards are measured using 12 parameters. So those 12 parameters are carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, PM 2.5 particulate matter to 10 and ozone, lead, ammonia, benzo, pyrene, benzene, arsenic, nickel. So all these are the 12 parameters to measure the air quality. The next topic is cheetah reintroduction. So eight wild African cheetahs that are five female and three male from Namibia were introduced in Kuno National Park in Madhya Pradesh under the project Cheetah. So it is the world's first international large wild carnivore translocation project. The next topic is plant genetic resources for food and agriculture. So plant genetic resources are any part of plants like seeds, fruits, cutting, pollen etc from which plants can be grown so to conserve use and manage plant genetic resources for food and agriculture an international agreement was made and it was called international treaty on plant genetic resources for food and agriculture so this treaty is also known as a seed treaty so recently india hosted the ninth session of governing body of the international treaty on plant genetic resources for food and agriculture so the main aim of the treaty is to recognize the contribution of farmers to diver uh, to diversify of 
the crops that feed the world establishing the global system to provide farmers plant breeders and scientists with access to plant genetic material and ensuring that recipients share benefits they derive from their use of these genetic materials the next topic is blue transformation so it is the effort to secure the maxim uh, mag uh, to secure the maximize the con and maximize the contributions of aquatic food systems and securing them by using the knowledge of emerging technology and practices so food and agriculture organization has released a document titled blue blue transformation roadmap 2022 to 2030 so the main their main objectives are to reduce global fish loss and waste by half by 2030 and next is uh all illegal unreported and un- unregulated activities should be fo- phased out and the third one is significantly increase global per capita fish consumption etc so the steps taken by india towards blue transformation are pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana centrally sponsored scheme on blue revolution fisheries and aquaculture infrastructure development fund matsya setu apps national policy on marine fisheries 2017 the next topic is breakthrough agenda report 2022 so it is released by international energy agency and the international renewable energy agency and the un climate change high level companions the next topic is world water development report 2022 so it is released by UN- unesco as per the report there is a sharp rise in f- fresh water withdrawal from streams lakes aquifers and human made reservoirs leading to water square- scarcity in different parts of the world next topic is one water approach so one water approach also called as integrated water resources management so under this system water is recycled and reused several times so it can help to combat water and urban ecology challenges the next topic is urban water body information system so it is launched by the ministry of housing and urban affairs so it will provide satellite images of water bodies to various cities to plan this rejuvenation The next topic is Swachh Sujal Pradesh. So Swachh Sujal Sujal Pradesh certificate is given to Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Next topic is Jal Doot app. So uh, this app will help in identifying groundwater level in selected villages. So it is launched by the Ministry of Rural Development. Next topic is Global Alliance for Industry Decarbonization. So it aims to accelerate net zero ambitions and decarbonization of industrial value chain. International Renewable Energy Agency with partnership of Siemens and Energy and B com- uh, and 13 com- companies including Tata Steel uh Jindal Steelworks have launched this alliance. Next topic is memorandum of understanding between International Solar Alliance and International Civil Aviation Organization. So both have signed memorandum of understanding to keep a check on the growth of carbon dioxide emissions in the sector. The next topic is United United in Science report. So as per the report the global fossil carbon dioxide emissions in 2022 returned to the pre pandemic levels of 2019 so 2015 to 2021 were warmest on the record and climate change made extreme heat and floods worse in 2022 next is global ocean observing systems report card 2022 so this report is given by the world meteorological department organization So next is digital monitoring reporting and verification systems. So these systems are the inter- are introduced to track the reductions in the greenhouse gas emissions to meet the climate change goals. So these systems are based on uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, blockchain, smart sensors, drones, etc. The next topic is 
carbon capture and storage so to car uh, the carbon dioxide produced by power generation or industries is captured transported and stored in deep underground to red to reuse it in the future and to reduce carbon emissions so norway is building world's first open access carbon capture and storage infrastructure on norway norway's north sea coast the next topic is innovation roadmap of mission integrated biorefineries so biorefineries are the processing units that convert biomass into biofuels biochemicals bioenergy etc so india has launched mission integrated biorefineries under mission innovation to catalyze the research and development to make clean energy affordable attractive and accessible for all so recently india has also announced irmib that is the innovation roadmap of mission integrated biorefineries and the global clean energy action forum developed by co leads from brazil canada uk and european commission the next topic is renewable energy and jobs annual review 2022 report by irena so irena is the international renewable energy agency so this uh, renewable energy and jobs annual review report was released by international renewable energy agency and international labor organization so as per the report if india will create 500 gigawatts of non fossil fuel energy sources by 20, 2030 then it could create 3.4 million new job opportunities and india generates 18% of the global hydro power employment next is hybrid power plant so hybrid power plants are those power plants which generate electricity from two or more sources so it may be solar plus wind or solar plus hydraulic or solar plus biomass etc so recently adani green company has launched world's largest 600 megawatt solar power project and 150 megawatts wind power project in jaisalmer next topic is dark sky reserves so dark sky reserve is a place which is protected from artificial light interference so india has set up the first dark sky dark sky reserve at hanle in ladakh as a part of Chang Thang Wildlife Sanctuary. So this place has highest lake on the earth, that is the Somorini Somoriri Lake. The next topic is Montreal Protocol. So Montreal Protocol Convention was organized in nineteen eighty seven. So under this agreement, the government, scientists, and industries will work together to cut down ninety nine percent of all ozone depleting substances like chlorofluorocarbons and replace with hydrochlorocarbons, uh, which do not destroy and replace with hydrofluorocarbons. which do not destroy the ozone layer but causes global warming the next topic is stockholm convention so persistent organic pollutants or pop are the chemical substances that that persists in the environment for a long time accumulate in humans and affect the human health or environment so to protect the human health and environment from pops a global treaty was signed between the countries called stockholm convention so other hazardous chemicals and waste conventions are basel convention so it was basel convention was established to control the trans put a trans boundary movements of hazardous waste and their disposals so it is adopted in 1989 next is rotterdam convention it was established to regulate the chemicals and pesticides in international trade so it is adopted in 1998 The next topic is prior informed consent. So, if a country want to import pesticides or chemicals, even if it is hazardous, then they are imported under the prior informed consent under the Rotterdam Convention, as it regulates the trade of hazardous chemicals and pesticides. So, iprod uh, iprodion and turbofos are the two herb uh, hazardous chemicals. So, iprodion is the fungicide used on fruits 
trees vegetables and it is toxic for reproduction next is turbophos is a soil inse insecticide used on sorghum maize beet and potatoes india is one of the largest exporters of turbophos next topic is trees outside forest in india initiative so this initiative is launched to expand the tree coverage outside the traditional forest by 28 lakh hectares so it is launched under the ministry of environment forest and climate change and us agency for international development to enhance carbon sequestration support local communities strengthen climate resilience the next topic is rani pur tiger reserve so it is in uttar pradesh so it is uttar pradesh uh, fourth tiger reserve so it is located in tropical dry and deciduous forest and it is the home to fauna such as tree tigers leopards sloth bears etc the other three tiger reserves are in uttar pradesh are dudwana tiger reserve pilibit tiger reserve <coughs> Amar, amangan tiger reserve next is neela kurinji so it is an endemic flower which is found in western ghats and western ghats only and blooms in the regions of tamil nadu kerala karnataka so it grows at an altitude of 1300 to 2400 meters so it blooms once every 12 years so recently neela kurinji or kurinji flower has bloomed in the Chand chandradona mountains chandradrona mountains after 12 years next is kritagya 3.0 so it is a national level hackathon organized by the indian council of agriculture research with national agricultural higher education project and crop sciences division so this initiative promote speed breeding from crop improvement to ensure overall sustainability and resilience in crop production in india the next topic is rule curve so rule curve is the regulations that specifies quantum of storage of water or empty space to be maintained in the reservoir at the different times of the year based on the rainfall data for 35 years so mulla periyar is the first reservoir to have rule curve implemented in the country the next topic is green fins hub so it is the first ever sustainable global marine tourism industry platform so it also protects the marine in environment and green fin hubs are launched by the unep along with uk based charity reef world foundation next topic is mission life so it is india led global mass movement that aims to protect and preserve the environment by every individual and through collective action so it is implemented under the ministry of environment forest and climate change so prime minister has also introduced the life mission at unfccc cop 26 meeting at glasgow the next topic is mainstreaming biodiversity in forestry so food and agriculture organizations has published a paper on forestry titled mainstreaming biodiversity in forestry in partnership with the center for international forestry research so mainstreaming biodiversity is the process of making policies and practices to conserve and promote sustainable use of natural resources and biodiversity next topic is urban flooding so urban flooding is defined as an excessive runoff in developed urban areas where the st st uh, storm water doesn't have anywhere to go due to poor capacity of drainage system amid flooding in major metropolitans of india the two cities that are uh, devanagari in karnataka and agartala in tripura have successfully curbed the urban flooding so the steps taken by these two cities are mapping of existence drainage system removal of illegal encroachment over drainage networks construction of storm water drains to curb the logging of rain water so these are about the out urban flooding the next topic is momla caves 
so this cave is the fourth longest cave in india with a total length of 7 kilometers so these are located in the east khasi hills of meghalaya so this cave is also known as the krem mola and is famous for its stalagmite and other rock formations so this cave is listed as one of the first 100 international union of geological sciences iogs so these are the first geology 100 geological sites in the world next is in nationally determined contributions synthesis report released by unfccc so it is released by unfccc next is um emissions gap report in the is the annual report released by unep so as per the emission gap report india is the third largest global uh, sorry greenhouse gas emitter the next topic is the coldest year of the rest of their lives report so this report is released by unicef so as per this report about 624 million children are exposed to one of the three other high heat measures like high heat wave duration high heat wave severity or extreme high temperatures the next topic is state of climate action report 2022 so it is released by the climate action tracker the next topic is climate transparency report so this report gives information of the climate performance of g20 so as per the report six g20 members including india did not sign the global methane pledge and at 1.5 degree centigrade rise in temperature globally g20 members can expect water scarcity and prolonged period of drought and less favorable agricultural conditions so in india in 2021 5.4% of its gdp is lost due to the extreme heat as per the report the next topic is world energy outlook so it is released annually by the international energy agency the next topic is greenhouse gas bulletin so it is uh, the report released by and uh, released annually by united nations world meteorological organization the next topic is state of mangroves 2022 so it is the annual report released by global mangrove alliance so as per the report the top 5 states and union territories with mangrove cover is west bengal gujarat andaman and nicobar islands andhra pradesh and maharashtra sundarbans are the largest mangrove forest of the world and it is spread over india and bangladesh the next topic is lead poisoning so lead is a naturally occurring toxic substance so it is also a by product of mining smelting and refining industries so as per the recent report prepared by niti aayog and council of scientific and industrial research the blood lead levels are higher in uh, bihar uttar pradesh madhya pradesh jharkhand chatisgarh and andhra pradesh it may affect brain development anemia nausea headache irritability and stomach ache tiredness premature birth etc so these are the effects of lead poisoning the next topic is green crackers so the crackers that are made without arsenic mercury barium and are not um, loud beyond a certain threshold are called the green crackers so these are produced by licensed manufacturers so the green crackers can cause 30% less air pollution and don't contain uh hazardous chemicals elements like barium nitrate next topic is compressed biogas so it is the compressed and purified biogas produced from waste or biomass sources like agricultural residue cattle dung etc so asia's first compressed biogas plant is inaugurated in sangroor in punjab the next topic is effects on of light pollution on migratory birds so the light pollution contribute to the deaths of the millions of birds from collision with buildings it may alter birds behavior animals and plants and it also harms human health and causes uh, sleep disorders diabetes and other problems 
द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज असिस्टेड नैचुरल रीजनरेशन सो असिस्टेड नैचुरल रीजनरेशन इज द एक्टिव प्लांटिंग एंड रिस्टोरेशन बाय द लोकल पीपल टू हेल्प ट्रीज एंड नैचुरल वेजिटेशन रिकवर फ्रॉम द बैरियर्स एंड थ्रेस सो थ्रेड्स सो रीसेंटली कंजर्वेशन इंटरनेशनल रिपोर्ट हाईलाइटेड द नीड्स ऑफ द असिस्टेड नैचुरल रीजनरेशन नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज टाइगर रिलोकेशन अ टाइगर फ्रॉम रतमबोर टाइगर रिजर्व नियर अरावली एंड विंध्या प्लेट्यू वॉज शिफ्टेड टू सरिस्का टाइगर रिजर्व इन राजस्थान टू इंक्रीज अ टाइगर रिजर्व आफ्टर सीकिंग परमिशन फ्रॉम नेशनल कंजर्वेशन टाइगर अथॉरिटी सो टू सो द नेक्स्ट वन इज सो टू इंक्रीज द टाइगर्स पॉपुलेशन ओके सो द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज Kadavur Slender Loris Sanctuary so it is located in Tamil Nadu so it is the India's first sanctuary for slender loris so slender loris is mainly found in the tropical scrub and deciduous forest it spend most of their lifetime on its on the trees and are the insectivores so it is found only in the southern india and sri lanka so it is protected under the schedule 1 of wildlife protection act of 1972 The next topic is sloth bears. So sloth bear is an endemic to India and small number of small number are found in Nepal and Sri Lanka. So it is listed under the schedule 1 of Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 and is vulnerable on IUCN red list. The next topic is Durgavati Tiger Reserve. So Durgavati Tiger Reserve is in Madhya Pradesh as Panna Tiger Reserve will get submerged due to the linking of the Ken Betwa rivers. The Panna Tigers are shifted to the newly approved Durgavati Tiger Reserve. So other tiger reserves of Madhya Pradesh are Kanha National Kanha uh, Bandavgar Tiger Reserve, Panna Tiger Reserve, Penj, Satpura and Sanjay Dubri Tiger Reserves. Next is mining in aravallis so the mining of the major and minor minerals in aravalli hills was banned by the supreme court to restore the traditional ecological ecological value of the hills the next topic is kolar fields so the center has decided to revive gold mining at kolar fields in karnataka so it is operated by the bharat gold mines limited a public private sector undertaking so kgf is one of the world's deepest gold mines at the depth of 3000 meters the next topic is blue flag beaches so blue flag beaches uh, certification sorry blue flag certification is awarded by the denmark based non profit foundation for environmental education so it is given based on the four categories so they are um, environmental education and information water quality environmental management safety and services so at present 12 beaches are certified blue flag so they are Uh, golden beach in odisha rushikonda beach in andhra pradesh radhanagar beach in andaman and nicobar islands eden beach in Rud- puducherry kovalam beach in tamil nadu thundi beach in lakshadweep kappad beach in kerala kadmat beach in lakshadweep uh, puduvedri and kasarko beach in karnataka Ga- uh, goghala beach in diu shivrajpur beach in gujarat so all these are the blue blue flag beaches of india the next topic is glyphosate so this is a herbicide that kills most plants so it is used to clear weeds from agricultural fields and prevent the plants from making plant growth proteins so government has restricted the use of glyphosate except for pest control operations so this herbicide is majorly used in orchards and plantation crops The next topic is new island in Pacific Ocean. So after the eruption of the Tonga volcano, new island was formed in the Pacific Ocean. This topic is twenty seventh conference of parties or COP twenty seven, COP twenty seven. So it was held in Sharm el Sheikh in Egypt. So the targets of COP twenty seven are set by Egyptian presidency. Are first is to adopt. to adopt transformative adaptation agenda to provide mobilize and deliver climate financing for developing countries to avoid backsliding on commitments and pledges to ensure transition based on low emission and climate resilience development and action to clarify support for loss and damage so conference of parties is the supreme decision making body of unfccc to address the climate changes The next topic is India and COP twenty seven. 
so india has submitted its strategy to protect the climate called long term low emission development strategy to unfccc the next topic is climate financing so finance so according to the unfccc climate finance is the funding of local national or transnational funding from uh, public private and alt, uh, alternate sectors to support and mitigate climate change next topic is adaptation gap report 2022 so it is released by the unep the next topic is methane emission so global methane assessment 2030 baseline report was released by the climate and clean Ener clean air coalition and unep so methane is 80 times greater than that of the carbon dioxide it is responsible for the growth of half of the tropospheric ozone uh, zone formation so it is this methane is responsible for the growth of half of the tropospheric zone formation okay so due to this methane it doesn't allow the carbon dioxide uh, in the upper layer of atmosphere to go beyond that so that is the reason global warming is increasing on the earth surface the next topic so india is among the top 5 methane emitters in the world the next topic is dynamic groundwater resource assessment 2022 so under union ministry under ministry of jal shakti uh, um, the dynamic groundwater resource assessment report for the year 2022 was released so as per the report in 67.8% areas groundwater extraction is less than 60, 70% and in 12% 12.1% area groundwater extraction is between 70% and 90% and in 4% areas groundwater extraction is between 90 to 100% and in 14.1% area groundwater extens extension exceeds the annual replenishable groundwater recharge and in 2% area major part of groundwater is brackish or saline so and the states with the highest over exploitation of ground water are punjab with 76.5% rajasthan with 72.5% haryana with 61.5% delhi with 44% tamil nadu with 31% and karnataka with 21% so some initiatives taken by india to control the ground water is um, central ground water board atal bhujal yojana manrega सेंट्रल ग्राउंड वाटर अथॉरिटी प्रधानमंत्री कृषि सिंचाई योजना जल शक्ति अभियान द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज ग्लेशियर्स एंड क्लाइमेट चेंज सो अकॉर्डिंग टू द यूनेस्कोज वर्ल्ड हेरिटेज ग्लेशियर रिपोर्ट a third of global uh, sorry a third of glaciers among the world heritage sites will disappear by 2050 the next topic is national bioenergy program so the generation of electricity and gas from organic matter is known as bioenergy so national bioenergy program has three sub schemes so they are waste to energy program biomass energy biomass program biogas program so it is launched under the ministry of new and renewable energy uh, energy so the next one is e waste management rules 2022 so india is the third largest producer of electronic waste in the world after china and us so to reduce reuse and manage the e waste ministry of environment forest and climate change has notified e waste rules 2022 the next topic is right to repair so right to repair is a framework that requires the manufacturers to disclose the product details to customers so that they can repair themselves or through third parties rather than relying on the original producers the next topic is great nicobar mega development project so under this project international container transshipment terminal military civil dual use airports solar power plant and integrated township is built the next uh, topic is global forest declaration assessment report 2022 so as per the report deforestation rates has declined by 6.3% tree cover loss was decreased by 6% and green cover uh, sorry governance of forests and forest land is not yet strong enough the next topic is 
urban agriculture so urban agriculture are the agricultural practices in the urban and peri urban areas so uh, street landscaping vertical farming uh, for, uh, forest gardening rooftop gardens green walls urban uh, beekeeping greenhouse uh, aquaponics animal husbandry and backyard gardens are the different types of urban farming so many cities of india like mumbai delhi chennai bengaluru kolkata have adopted urban agriculture the next topic is national mission on natural farming so natural farming is a chemical free farming and livestock based so national farming in gujarat is 31.5% in andhra pradesh it is 28.8% in madhya pradesh it is 11% in kerala it is 7.9% in maharashtra it is 7.4% in uttar pradesh it is 6.2% in odisha it is 2.4% in jammu and kashmir it is 1.2% in himachal pradesh it is 0.9% in telangana it is 0.2% and in punjab it is 0.2% so benefits of natural farming are it discourages environmental exposure to pesticides and chemicals it builds healthy soil it helps combat erosion it fights the effect of global warming it supports water conservation and water health and it discourages algae blooms it supports animal health and welfare and encourages biodiversity the next topic is international year of millets so 2023 is declared as an international year of millets to raise the awareness about the importance of millets in food security and nutrition so before green revolution millets were one of the largest grown samples in india now the top 5 millet producing states are madhya pradesh gujarat karnataka rajasthan and maharashtra so millets benefit consumers in terms of health benefit farmers as they improve soil quality consume less water and are resistant to extreme weather conditions and millets are also helpful to for the ecosystem as they support zero hunger and promote sustainable consumption and production and support climate action the next topic is sites that is convention on international trade in endangered species of wild fauna and flora so it is an international agreement between governments to ensure the international trade and wild animals and plants do not threaten their survival so cop 19 of sites was recently held in panama the next topic is biodiversity heritage sites so biodiversity heritage sites are the areas that are unique ecologically fragile ecosystems so they are spread over terrestrial co- coastal inland and main marine waters having rich biodiversity so tamil nadu has declared uh, aripatti and meenakshi puram villages in madurai districts as the first biodiversity heritage sites in india so aripatti village has several species of birds like lagger falcon shaheen falcon and bone lilies bone lily bone lilies uh, eagle and it is also a home for indian pangolin slender loris and pythons so this anaikondan tank built during the region of pandian kings in 16th century is present in the village and is and megalithic structures rock cut temples tamil brahmi inscriptions jain beads etc are part of this village the next topic is climate and development an agenda for action so it is released by world health organization next is state of climate in asia 2021 report is published by world meteorological organization next is provisional state of the global climate in 2022 report is released by meteorological organization The next topic is global carbon budget 2022 report is released by global carbon project next green energy open access portal so under this portal consumers can access green power easily through transparent procedures the next is himalayan yak so recently food safety and standards authority of india has recently Uh, accepted himalayan yak as a food animal so food animals are the animals that are raised and used for food production and consumption so himalayan yak is also known as mountain cow so it is in iucn status 
it is in the vulnerable status of iucn the next topic is acyclofenac so acyclofenac is a, a veterinary veter, veterinary painkiller and due to the usage of this drug on animals the vulture population in 2006 has drastically uh, dramatically decreased across asia so recently in indian veterinary research institute has demanded the ban of using acyclofenac in cattle next is fujiwara effect so if two cyclones or storms interact with each other then it is called fujiwara effect so these storms are formed around same time in same ocean region and the distance between two centers of storms is or ice is less than 1400 kilometers the next is drought monitoring tool so it is a new satellite based drought monitoring tool which provides data and safeguards measure in south asia so it will help farmers to obtain drought tolerant seeds develop supplementary irrigation and apply potassium nitrate that can help seedlings cope better with dry conditions the next topic is china's china develops perennial rice variety so this type of rice variety it uh, in this type of rice variety it is not necessary to plant the rice saplings every year so this pr23 variety if planted once can yield for eight consecutive harvest across four years so the rice in india is a karif crop it needs high temperature approximately 21 degrees to 37 degrees throughout life period of crop and it is it needs high humidity prolonged sunshine and an assured water supply so the the soil with clay and organic matter which has water retention capacity that is the alluvial soil is ideal and india is the world's second largest producer of rice after china and india is the largest exporter of rice is cop 15 to the united nation convention on biological diversity cbd so 15th cop of cbd cbd was held in montreal in canada so it was chaired by china and hosted by canada so the major objectives of this summit is to adopt a climate uh, adopt a global biodiversity framework which will replace the he biodiversity targets that is expired in 2020 so here the main objectives of this he biodiversity are to raise awareness about the value of biodiversity to incorporate biodiversity value into the national and local development and poverty reduction strategies and to eliminate harmful incentives and subsidies so this ig biodiversity target was expired in 2020 so in this meeting in this cop 15 meeting they have adopted conming montreal global biodiversity framework so the main objective of this conming montreal global biodiversity framework is to address biodiversity loss restore ecosystem and protect indigenous rights so to achieve this target four long term goals were introduced so they are to reduce the rate of extinction of all species by 2050 sustainable use of manage uh, sustainable use and management of biodiversity and fair sharing of the benefits like digital sequence information on genetic resources and to provide adequate means to least developed and small islands and developing states so that they can implement their targets better the next topic is world restoration flagships so un general assembly has declared the years 2021 to 2030 as the united nation decade on ecosystem restoration so recently the un decade on ecosystem restoration has declared first 10 world flagships restoration flagships at the sidelines of cop 15 of cbd so those 10 flagships are global contribution broad engagement many types of activities benefits to nature and people addresses cause and of degradation knowledge in knowledge integration measurable goals loans and land or seascape context monitoring and management policy integration so um under this different countries have introduced flagship initiatives so they are trinational atlantic forest pack under the argentina brazil and paraguay and 
these countries are to restore 15 million hectares of degraded forest by 2050 next is abu dhabi marine restoration in uae uae it is to restore coral mangrove and seagrass in abu dhabi creating a safe place for dugong aquatic mammal next is great green wall for restoration and peace implemented by burkina faso djibouti eritrea ethiopia uh, mali mauritania niger senegal sudan chand with the aim to restore the savanna grasslands and farmlands across 8000 kilometers belt of africa known as sahel next is namami gange implemented by india and it aims to rejuvenation of the india's sacred river ganga next is multi country mountain flagships so it is implemented by uh, democratic republic of congo kyrgyzstan rwanda serbia uganda to protect mountain landscapes and safeguard mountain species like mountain gorillas and snow leopards next is small island developing states flagship implemented by vanuatu comoros saint lucia to restore sensitive ecosystems of island nations and safeguard wildlife and strengthen economies next is atlan dala conservation initiative it implemented by kazakhstan and aims to conserve and restore kazakhstan steppe semi desert and desert ecosystems across historical range of uh, saiga antelope next is central american dry corridor implemented by costa rica and salvan salvador gutenda guatemala honduras Nica, nicaragua panama so to these are implemented to restore 3 lakh hectares of drought strike and control so strike and central american farmlands and forest next is building with nature in indonesia so it is implemented by indonesia to naturally regenerate mangroves and protect in uh, indonesia's coastline against flooding next is shan shui initiative in china so it is implemented in china across china to restore 10 million hectares of ecosystem across china including forest grasslands and waterways next topic is restoration barometer report 2022 so it is published by the international union of conservation of nature the next topic is updated red list of threatened species so iucn has updated red list of threatened species in cop 15 biodiversity conference in canada they are dugong dugong is also known as sea cow they are only herbivorous marine man- mammals and feed on sea grass okay so they are fo- they are found in shallow coastal waters of india and western pacific oceans indian oceans and western pacific oceans so in india it is found in the gulf of mannar park bay kutch gulf of kutch andaman and nicobar islands so it is a state animal for andaman and nicobar islands so tamil nadu government has also announced india's first conservation reserve for dugongs in park bay so threats for dugong include um unintentional capture in fishing gear in east africa and poaching in new caledonia and boat injuries and destructions of seagrass habitats in both locations so the next one is pillar coral so these are found throughout the caribbean from yucatan peninsula and florida to trinidad and tobago so since 1990 its population was shrunk down to 80% and moved from vulnerable to critically endangered threats include stony coral tissues loss diseases and bleaching caused by increased sea surface temperature and excess antibiotics uh, fertilizers and sewage next is abalone so these are the shellfish species so due to marine heat waves abalone diseases increased worldwide affecting black abalone in california mexico and green uh, ormia found in english channels to northwest africa and mediterranean sea so new threatened species in india are white cheek dancing frog so only it is only found in the small ranges in 
वन सिक्सटी सेवन किलोमीटर्स ऑफ वेस्टर्न गार्ड्स ऑफ कर्नाटका सो ड्यू टू द पोल्यूशन क्लाइमेट चेंज डिजीज पेस्ट इनवेजिव स्पीशीज इट हैज केप्ट इन टू एंडेंजर्ड कैटेगरी नेक्स्ट इज अंडमान स्मूथ हॉन्ड शार्क सो इट इज़ फाउंड इन अंडमान सी इन ईस्टर्न इंडियन ओशन ऑफ द कोस्ट ऑफ माइनमार थाईलैंड अंडमान एंड निकोबार आईलैंड सो इट इज केप्ट अंडर द वलरेबल ड्यू टू फिशिंग प्रेजर द नेक्स्ट वन इज येलो हिमालयन फ्रिटिलरी सो इट इज़ अ हर्बी herbaceous plant of lily family so these are used in anti asthetic as and as the asthetic and anti rheumatic febrifuge galactogouge hemostatic of the limic oxytoxic so it is for you used for medical use purposes so it is mostly found in the himalayas of bhutan china india myanmar Nepal and Pakistan so due to the unorganized harvest over extraction unsustainable and premature harvesting of bulbs coupled with illegal hidden markets these are under the vulnerable category the next topic is nature based solutions so united nation environment program has released state of finance of nature for nature 2022 report the next topic is adoption of solar energy in india so under the scheme for development of solar parks and ultra mega solar power projects 57 solar parks of capacity more than 39 gigawatts was sanctioned under the ministry of new and renewable energy next is the initiatives taken by india to promote solar energy in india are international solar alliance one sun one world one grid production lens incentive scheme on national program on high efficiency solar pv modules kisan urja suraksha evam uthan mahabiyan pm kusum and the national solar mission the next topic is energy conservation amendment act 2022 so this act amended the previous energy conservation act of 2001 it provides framework for regulating energy consumption and promoting energy efficiency and energy conservation conservation so the key objectives of energy conservation amendment bill are to enhance the scope of energy conservation building code to bring large residential buildings within the fold of energy conservation regime to establish carbon markets to increase members in the governing council of bureau of energy and efficiency to empower the state electricity regulatory commissions to make regulations for energy efficiency the next topic is carbon border adjustment mechanism so it is a plan made by the european union to tax the carbon intensive products or to tax the carbon generated products like iron and steel cement fertilizers aluminum electricity and hydrogen from 2026 so this plan was proposed in cop 27 summit in egypt but india has opposed it opposed it so the significance of carbon border tax are to address carbon leakage issues to encourage more rapid applications for renewable technology to incentivize non european union countries to increase their climate ambition to ensure global climate efforts and upholding polluter space principle the next topic is climate investment opportunities in india schooling sector so this is a report released by the world bank so due to heat waves in india the temperature is drastically increasing in india so to convert this into an opportunity and make sustainable initiatives in air cooling equipment and innovations in farming the world bank has released this report the initiatives made by the government to help people adopt to rising temperatures are india cooling action plan 2019 international solar alliance lifestyle for environment movement by 27 2047 india to phase out ozone depleting hydrochlorocarbons the next topic is polluted river stretches for restoration of water quality 2022 report so it is released by the central pollution control board as per the report the total number of polluted rivers stretches from stretches polluted river stretches has fallen from 351 in 2018 to 311 in 2022 and the unchanged 
polluted rivers are kept in priority 1 and almost unchanged polluted rivers are kept in priority 2. So Maharashtra has highest number of polluted river stretches followed by Madhya Pradesh. The next topic is global status of black soil report of food and agriculture organization so as per the report the black soil is under threat the black soil contains organic carbon matter up to 25 centimeters depth the black color is due to the black soil in the the black color in the black soil is due to the process of melanization so the black color is formed from black uh, from the organic matter of numerous dying roots of germanious vegetation so it is called melanization process so in india black soil is spread mostly across interior gujarat maharashtra karnataka madhya pradesh and deccan lava plateau and malva plateau next is arctic report card 2022 so it is re released by the u.s national oceanic and atmospheric administration so as per the report um, the arctic continues to warm more than twice as fast as the rest of the globe and mean sea surface temperature is rising and this is leading to the increase in the phytoplankton production of organic matter in oceans and persistent summer sea ice due to cooler surface waters at Chukchi, ski, Chukchi Sea. The next topic is United Nations Water Summit on Groundwater 2022. So this summit was held in Paris and it uses United Nations World water development report 2022 as a baseline next is right to repair portal so this portal was launched by ministry of consumer affairs food and public distribution the next topic is renewable energy report 2022 so it is released by the international energy association next topic is sinduja one so it is the ocean wave energy converter developed by iit madras Next is sponge bleaching. So these are the simple aquatic animals with dense porous and skeletons. So these filters, these filter large quantities of water, capture small food particles, moves carbon from water column to sea floor, provides habitat for species such as crabs, shrimps and starfish. So New Zealand has recorded the largest ever sponge bleaching event. So like corals, they also uh, are prone to bleaching due to the heat stress. Next topic is Wren Babbler. So bird watchers discovered a new songbird and named it Lisu Wren Babbler. So as it is found in the Lisu community of Ar Arunachal Pradesh. So they are the on they are only 10 to 15 centimeters long and are found in the southern Asia. The next topic is oldest known DNA. So scientists have discovered oldest known DNA fragments in the permafrost at northern edge of Greenland. So the study also reveals that high Arctic was much warmer and greener place than many places on the earth today. The next topic is bomb cyclone. So when a rapid pressure drop in the drop when the rapid pressure drop is accompanied by the strong winds and can lead to severe weather including heavy snowfall strong winds and thunderstorms and it is called as bomb cyclone it occurs during winter months and most common in the mid latitudes like eastern us europe and asia the next topic is cyclone mandaus so Mandaus is the slow moving cyclone that absorbs lot of moisture, carries large amount of rainfall. So Tamil Nadu and neighboring areas have experienced a heavy rainfall due to the cyclone Mandaus. The next topic is Kalasa Banduri project. So it is constructed to divert water from two tributaries of Kalasa and Banduri of Mahadai river to Malaprabha river. So this project aims to construct several dams on river Maha Mandovi to facilitate drinking water for drought, drought hit towns in the northern Karnataka.